Okay, so today I'm gonna do one of my most important videos, which is basically debunking expatriarch on the topic of father bias in family court. Okay, this will probably be a very long video because he will reference a lot of sources which I will go and take a look at and debunk, right? And I even have here some notes. This is why this is. Uh, unusual form format for today okay okay but before we start uh, responding to this video here uh, let me just go uh, quickly through the evidence on father uh, on anti-father bias in family court okay so I've shown this in many videos here so I, I won't read this whole article here right studies show judicial bias against dads okay this comes from a uh, national parent organization okay a study conducted in 2004 found that although the 10 a year doctrine had been abolished some time ago the majority of indiana family court judges still supported it and decided cases coming before them consistently with it a survey of judges in alabama louisiana mississippi and tennessee found a clear preference among judges for maternal custody in general another survey this one commissioned by the minnesota supreme court found that a majority uh, 56 percent of the state judges both male and female agreed with the statement quote i believe young children belong with their mother end quote only a few of the judges indicated that they would need more information about the mother before they could answer fathers one judge explained, quote, must prove their ability to parent while mothers are assumed to be able, end quote. Another judge commented, quote, I believe that God has given women a psychological makeup that is better tuned to caring for small children, end quote. End quote. So a lot of uh, studies here referenced in this article won't, like I said, um, this would take too long to read all this now okay but there are a lot of judges that are uh, in favor of mothers that supported that supported tender years doctrine okay um, and also then there's this paper here lagging behind the times parenthood custody and gender bias in the family court which is probably one of the most important papers on the subject even though it's a bit old but it actually counters a lot of uh, stuff that he will later on say in this video and the feminist studies uh, that are constantly cited uh, in reference to this topic, which is like the Massachusetts study and stuff like that. Okay. <clears throat> so for example, based on the Massachusetts studies own data, um, it can be, extracted that mothers get primary residential custody 93.4 percent of the time in divorces fathers in divorces get primary residential custody only 2.5 percent of the time fathers in divorce get joint physical custody only four percent of the time fathers in divorce get primary or joint physical custody less than seven percent of the time when fathers actively seek custody they receive primary residency in less than one out of three cases 29 percent and joint physical residency in less than half uh 46 percent okay so this feminist nonsense oh uh when fathers seek or fi fight for their kids uh, and seek custody then they automatically get it in vast majority of cases it's absolutely wrong Then there's also this, Kathy Young, do fathers have the edge of divorce? The high success rate of men in custody battles is yet another contender for the phony statistics hall of fame. The figures do not refer to contested cases. The work from which the gender bias study, meaning the Massachusetts study, guarded its numbers did not separate contested and uncontested custody bids but showed that mothers uh, fighting for sole custody received it 75% of the time. 
a Stanford study of more than 1,000 California couples divorced in the 1980s suggests conventional wisdom is right. If both parents requested sole custody when filing for divorce, it was awarded to mom in 45% uh, and to dad in 11% of the cases with joint physical custody for the rest. When she asked for sole custody and he for joint custody, the odds were 2 to 1, two to one in her favor. In custody determinations, women receive a clear and unequivocal advantage over men when they receive primary residential custody of children approximately 90% of the time. This result assures mothers great power over fathers largely due to gen uh, gender stereotypical beliefs that mothers must be primary caretakers, a belief promoted and protected by the courts who award mothers custody in overwhelming numbers. Then there's also this paper, uh, Gender Discrimination and Child Custody Battles by Aubrey Smith, University of North Georgia. According to Selfridge, if the trial court has a generally low opinion of fathers' child re rearing roles, then the application of the best interest standard is likely to be biased in the mother's favor. Since the best interest standard is extremely vague, what is considered to be the child's best interest is left up to the personal opinion of the judges. Therefore, if a family court judge views mothers to be better suited to raise a child than fathers, they are more inclined to rule in favor of the mothers. And then there's also uh, domestic violence cases. Men, have, men also have a harder time proving their innocence when a domestic violence allegation has been made. Previous scholarship has primed custody assessor to regard men as the only true intimate partner violence perpetrators and to suspect male family court litigation litigants denials of abuse when a mother makes a domestic abuse al allegation against a father not only evaluation into the allegation is done a biased judges automatically view the man as guilty this creates the potential of mothers manipulating the court to rule in their favor, knowing that the court will not look into domestic violence allegations as much as they could. Mothers have the motivation to place false allegations. So to summarize what we just read, we have data that shows that judges basically themselves admit that they are biased, okay? We have feminist own data that shows that even when uh, fathers seek custody, they get it less when mothers seek sole custody, okay? And men have harder time to prove their innocence in domestic violence allegations disputes, okay? And also the uh, courts have a vague de definition of best interests, okay? Then there's also a very important point about um, court costs, actually, which is not very often brought up, because a lot of these feminists, they say, oh, fathers don't fight for their children and blah, blah, blah. Well, uh, child custody court cases actually cost a lot of money, right? Uh, according to this source, the cost of a child custody court case can range anywhere between anywhere from $3,000 to over $40,000. So it's quite costly. Not every man can actually afford these kinds of legal battles, okay? And if they know beforehand that courts are biased against them and they prefer mothers and have certain stereotypical views of mothers and fathers, then it is actually understandable that they would not engage in such a court battle right which is costly okay so there's a financial barrier as well okay but there are many more biases and evidence of biases that we will explore in this video okay so let's actually go into his video and by the way his own sources actually prove my point okay and by the way uh, just a heads up my voice is kind of 
breaking up because I'm a little bit sick, but anyway, I'm doing this video anyway. So let's go into this video. It sure is interesting how one small group of people can take one small survey done in one small county, manipulate the ever-living out of those numbers, and then propagate one of the biggest lies about fathers and family court I have ever heard. The advocate here is responding to one of my videos on child custody on her YouTube channel, taking issue with the idea that men who seek custody typically get it, and in particular with the Massachusetts study on gender bias, which said that 70% of those men who seek custody obtain custody. Now, Lawrence was the first account I ever blocked on TikTok, long before I ever started making videos on these topics. But I take her concerns about misinformation and accurately reporting the facts as genuine, and so I'll unblock her and tag her in this, which will be my most comprehensive video on father bias in family courts that I've ever done. Yeah, and I'm going to destroy this video here. Okay, the 70% figure is absolute bullshit. And let's start out by correcting this. You have zero stake in this game as a 40-year-old childless man, and yet here you are trying to be the hero of it by spreading lies about other men. Now, a quick scroll through my content shows that I'm not childless. I share 50-50 custody of our son, a teenager who is on the spectrum. Now, as for my stake in this, Lauren herself admits that men are actively discouraged from seeking custody, and so I think it's on all of us to accurately report what kind of biases do exist in family court, as well as encouraging men to be involved fathers, not just at the time of separation, but when the child is born, and also afterwards when they get custody, in order to overturn the absolutely horrific rates of father and mother. Now, here's also something very disgusting that he does, right, and I will address this multiple times in this video, right, feminists and such as expatriarch, they paint it as, oh, fathers are not involved enough in, in child care and stuff like that, right? So let, let's just run with that for a second. That would not in itself mean that they shouldn't get custody, right? Or that they are inferior as a parent inherently, right? That's number one, right? So this excuse, oh, look, the mothers get more custody because they are a primary caregiver. I will address this argument more in detail later in this video, but this is just nonsense, okay? This is just a huge leap in logic, okay? It could still be the case that even though the mother is a primary caregiver, she could still be the worst parent, right? So that's number one. Number two, the reason why, the reason why this is actually the case, why fathers are less in the home taking care of, of, of the kids is because they're fucking working, okay? And why they're working? Because this is something that women want, right? Otherwise they seek divorce. But we'll get to that later. Abandonment. Now, Lauren has only a single source to dispute the Massachusetts gender bias study, which she presents as a paper written by Mark. I have um, multiple sources to dispute this. Mark Rosenthal. Except that it's not a paper, it's an article that Rosenthal wrote on his own website. Rosenthal is also not a researcher, but a software engineer like myself. So now he goes into a lot of uh, ad hominem attacks against Mark Rosenthal and the man's rights movement more generally, which is bullshit. And he was a speaker at the International Conference on Men's Issues in 2019. And that conference is run by A Voice for Men, an anti-feminist group the Southern Poverty Law Center has declared a hate group, largely because they advocate for violence against women, and their founder, Paul Elam, has openly defended grape culture. So um, he doesn't say he doesn't show any evidence of these allegations here, right? That they are a hate group and defended uh, violence or whatever, right? He he doesn't show any evidence of this, right? So he smears the man's rights movement, okay? Even though I have criticized Paul Elam and uh, I would criticize a voice for men for various things, but whatever, right? But he doesn't show any evidence in his video. He just cites the Southern Poverty Law Center. So yeah, if the Southern Law Poverty Law Center says something, that means it must be true, right? <laughs> that, that's bullshit. So I think we need to be careful about how we represent this. It is not an independently peer-reviewed study or paper, but a blog article written by an MRA misogynist with title. Again, uh, this is just poisoning the well. This is just not just. Uh, looking at the arguments, but basically an ad hominem fallacy that he commits here, okay? I mean, I could also say that, oh, since you are a feminist and you are associated with feminism and feminism has shown on multiple occasions to be lying and being untrustworthy and being generally hateful against men, therefore we can just dismiss your entire video. That's basically your logic, right? 
ties to a hate group. Now, Rosenthal obtains the data that the Massachusetts study is based on, and it's important to point out It's garbage data, by the way here that that data set does not dispute anything that is in the Massachusetts study. When we look at fathers who ask for custody, they get sole or joint legal custody in 84% of cases. But Rosenthal is not happy with these numbers, so he fudges the math. He drops joint custody entirely from consideration and focuses only on sole custody, saying that when fathers seek custody, they get sole custody 45% of the time. But when mothers seek custody, they get sole custody 74% of the time. How does he fudge the math, right? He has very clearly uh, shown how he does the math, right? You're just saying, oh, he fudges the math. Does mean he fudges the math, right? Which he then uses as the headline for his article, that mother's requests for sole custody are granted 65% more than father's requests, or about one and two thirds. But as I've covered before, men self-report that their wives are four times more likely to be the primary caretaker of their children yeah, I've already addressed this. This doesn't mean that they are better parents inherently, okay? And I will go deeper into this later. ...than they are. When we look at stay-at-home parents, again, mothers are four times more likely to be the stay-at-home primary caretaker of their children than fathers. Yeah, because mothers want it that way, actually. Otherwise, they divorce, which is what the evidence shows. And when we look at census data and custodial parents, again, mothers are four times more likely to be the custodial parent than fathers. But family courts are assigning sole custody to mothers, not at four times, but not even at twice the rate of fathers, shows an incredible bias towards fathers. Yeah, that's a leap in logic, actually. Like, what the fuck? Just because they do four times the amount of care taking I, I don't even know where these numbers come from he doesn't cite them anywhere so you know very questionable also but whatever right but let's just say it is the case that they do four times the amount of caretaking this doesn't mean that oh since the courts don't give them four times the amount of custody therefore there's bias against uh, there's there's bias in, towards fathers or in favor of fathers this doesn't make any sense this is what kind of logic is that? This is horseshit. To put this another way, men who contest custody are twice as likely to walk out of court being the primary caretaker than they were walking in. Which they yeah, this is nonsense. Again, sh show us the evidence for that. Then brings me to Lauren's next point. Where the study still definitively concludes that mothers get sole physical custody 65% more often than dads, only to cherry pick the facts so that only your narrative is supported, then push this as some irrefutable nationwide fact. Now, Lauren misspeaks here and means legal custody, not physical custody. But on her other point about cherry picking a single data source, ignoring all else just to reaffirm your own narrative, it's important to remember that Rosenthal's article here doesn't dispute any of the claims that Massachusetts study makes. Not only that, but it only deals with one study. The Massachusetts report actually cites five studies in order to make its case. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that now, right? I've actually a better counter source to the Massachusetts study than, uh, than Rosenthal. A study of law professionals that show that fathers get sole or joint physical custody 94% of the time. So let's go there, right? So let's first, before we deal, deal with this study, let's actually go to the Massachusetts study in general, right? By the evidence demonstrating that mothers receive primary re residential custody of children appro approximately 90% of the time, that custody is first determined by court. This study offered the following remarkable conclusion to demonstrate that gender bias against fathers in custody determinations was a myth unworthy of further study or policy changes. Now he repeats the 70 now it repeats a 70% myth, right? Fathers who actively seek custody obtain it 70% of the time, right? Okay. Now the first flaw in the study methodology is that it was entirely subjective. That is, it was based on interviews rather than hard data from court files. Study reported sending surveys to family law attorneys, general attorneys and probate judges, okay, 
like he said in the video. So this is the study he's talking about. The study reported that the survey of families attorney showed 11,000 divorces involving dependent children in two years and 2,100 cases in five years in which fathers sought custody. It concluded without elucidation or citation to authority that the percentage of fathers seeking custody increased recently and that half instead of two-fifths of the cases in which fathers sought custody occurred in the most two recent years. Accordingly, even accepting these unsupported assumptions, the total number of divorces in a five-year period studied would be 24,000, meaning fathers sought custody in 8% or 2,100 of them. Of these 2,100 cases, the study reported that fathers received primary custody custody in 29 of the cases and joint physical custody in additional 64 percent and this is where he gets the 94 percent figure from right just adding these two numbers which is just ridiculous actually he does this a lot of times in the video thus in 24,000 divorces in five-year period involving dependent children mothers received custody in 94 percent of the cases fathers received primary custody in 2.5 percent and joint physical residency was awarded in four percent of the cases right so this is actually the actual data right if you just uh, i mean if if they seek it they receive primary custody in 29 uh, percent of the cases right which is ridiculous right meanwhile mothers receive custody in over 90% of the cases. The Middlesex study that Rosenthal uses that shows that men get some form of legal custody 84% of the time. Some form of legal custody is very vague, by the way. Okay, so some form, what does this even mean? Okay, so here's what he's referencing here. The Massachusetts study also uh, attempted to prop up its 70% figure with two other studies that purported to show parental success in child custody matters see massachusetts study in reality these studies confirm both flawed methodology and fail to examine potential gender bias that forced fathers not to seek custody once one study of the 700 cases in middlesex county massachusetts between 1978 and 1984 confirmed that fathers received primary physical custody in two-thirds of the cases in which they sought it Put in another way, the Middlesex study cited by the Massachusetts study showed that mothers received primary residency in over 94% of the time. Okay, 94% of the time, fathers received primary residency only 5.4% of the time, and joint physical residency was awarded not even not even 1% of the time. Okay, so what is this guy talking about? A second study from Middlesex County that shows that men get some form of legal custody 79% of the time. So again, some form of legal custody 79% of the time. Okay. Wow. Third study cited by the Massachusetts study involved 500 cases from Middlesex County from 1978 to 1981. The study was referred to as concluding that when fathers sought sole custody, they received it. 41% of the time and joint custody no definition of legal or physical custody was offered in 38% uh, of the cases okay this is where again he adds these two numbers together right the, the joint custody and the sole physical or the sole custody right to inflate the numbers right and even in this study no def definition of legal custody or physical custody is offered actually right given that fathers in that study sought sole custody only eight percent of the time compared to uh, eight point one four percent in the other middlesex county study and an estimated eight point seven five percent in the massachusetts study another interpretation of the same data is that mothers receive sole or primary custody in uh, over 93.8% of the cases 
compared to fathers receiving sole custody in 3.2% or joint custody in 3%, okay? So again, you also have to keep in mind why are there so few fathers seeking custody? Again, I have already explained it, okay? So this shows that, first of all, again, no legal definition. He even said it in his video, some form of legal custody was offered, right? Or granted to the fathers, right? But in the vast majority, it still goes to the mothers, even according to his own source, right? A study from LA County in California that shows that men get sole custody 63% of the time. So this is the study, the Weizmann study, which is very famous and which is referenced uh, in a lot of this data here, okay, which is very flawed. Okay, let, let me just read you this. The classic example of such a study is now discredited work of sociologist Weizmann in 1985. Weizmann reported that women suffered 73% drop in their standard of living following divorce, while men experienced 42% increase in theirs. Which is fucking nonsense. Her finding, findings were trumpeted in the news media and various publications as proof that divorce laws actually favored men and that more economic uh, protections had to be given to women of divorce. The problem was that Weizmann's numbers were woefully inaccurate. A conclusion shared by independent researchers, feminist researchers even, and eventually even Weizmann herself. For example, as recounted by feminist author Susan Faludi, Weizmann purported to base her study on a methodology advanced by Saul Hoffman, an economist at the University of Delaware, and Greg Duncan, a social scientist. Upon learning of Weizmann's claims, Hoffman and Duncan attempted to contact her to discuss the discrepancies in her own finding that using the same methodology, uh, post-divorce women suffered a much smaller and temporarily temporary decline in their standards of living by 30 percent the two also found that divorced women's standards of living actually rose within five years to a figure higher than that obtained while married to their former husbands after sidestepping hoffman and duncan for more than four years weizmann finally supplied her data to them but the data were disorganized and unviewable Accordingly, Hoffman and Duncan ran the data supplied by Weizmann in her book, and they still re received a figure closer to their much lower number. When they published their findings demonstrating that Weizmann's figures were almost certainly in error, suspiciously large and inconsistent with her own information, this news was hardly reported by the news media at all. Even as late as 19... 96, despite the study's refutation, the erroneous figures were still being incorporated into public policy. The U.S. Census Bureau later confirmed in a study that Weizmann's number 73% was wrong and inconsistent with her own information. Eventually, Weizmann herself acknowledged her study was erroneous. So, he cites a study here, or the Massachusetts study cites a study which he then claims, or cites here, right, which the authors already said is actually bullshit, okay? And this Weizmann study is actually cited in a lot of these later papers that he will reference, okay? As well as a nationwide study that shows that men get some form of custody in 51% of cases. So... Let me also go to the nationwide study, right? Uh, it's this one, right, by Atkinson, Criteria for Deciding Child Custody in Trial and Appellate Courts. Okay, very uh, important to keep these terms in mind, okay? Trial and Appellate Courts. Now, on page 11, we read, okay, Quotes the appellate court figures which shows fathers and mothers obtaining custody with 
roughly equal frequency may not be completely reflective of what is happening in the trial courts, it is possible that mothers in fact are still obtaining custody in a majority of contested trial court cases. Also, quote from the same page, at least seven states by law still give mothers an automatic preference over fathers, end quote. So his own source that he cited actually proves my point, right? And when you actually, again, when you look into the difference between appellate courts and trial courts, you see that sample bias is the case here, right? So let's actually go through this. Uh, so I, let's actually take a look at this. So appellate, in appellate courts, the lawyers simply argue legal and policy issues before the judge or a group of judges. In the trial courts, the lawyers present evidence and legal arguments to persuade the jury in a jury trial or the judge in a bench trial. So the trial court is actually the first instance, so to speak, right? And then when there's later stuff contested, um, well, there's already stuff contested in the first instance, but if there's further, if there are further legal battles, then it goes to the appellate courts, right? But a vast majority of people who are going to be in the appellate courts uh, con being contested are fathers, right? Because mothers already uh, get the custody during the trial court. So to summarize, this Massachusetts study is a failure on many fronts. Now, Lauren also says that the reason why Massachusetts does show a bias towards fathers is because of unique laws that it has in setting up default temporary custody orders for joint custody, and that no other state has these laws, which is why this trend isn't replicated in other states. But that's not correct. The Massachusetts study itself points to data from California and nationwide, which also shows this trend. But Massachusetts was not the only state to conduct a gender bias study. Like Florida, for example. Yeah, we're going to look at this also. And what they found was not only a disturbing trend of fathers to contest custody, not for custody of the kids, but in order to gain an advantageous property settlement, but that when men did contest for custody, they were largely successful. So it doesn't even go deeper into the report or the actual evidence of the report, but he just goes to the summary, okay? Let's actually go to the Florida report, okay? So first of all, the report actually admits that fathers are disadvantaged when it comes to visitations of their children, okay? It's funny how it does mention that, okay? But now to the custody section here. Um, now, when you actually take a look at this, it is actually largely based on anecdotal evidence and uh, individual case reports and opinions. Okay, no aggregate data actually, right? Okay, for example, testimony before the commission indicates, however, that courts automatically order shared parental responsibility without due consideration of the best interests of the child or of other factors that would justify sole custody under a statute. Quote, he drew joint custody, automatic joint custody, and at one point, my ex-husband, who is Iranian, threatened in front of the judge to take the child to Iran with him, and he was still awarded joint custody, end quote. So that's just an anecdote, basically. It's a testimony um from a mother that we don't know we don't know what what's the case here right it's it's just not sufficient evidence here really and this is a, a theme in these kinds of reports right this is something that is often um, the case that they don't really cite a aggregate data or real evidence but just these these case studies or these case, individual case reports okay or uh, reference again the massachusetts study or the weitzman study which we already talked about which are flawed okay so they're just uh, basically citing z zombie statistics right and then there's also this study here there's basically only other study that is cited in this section here 
uh, that is relevant, but this is again about appellant cases, right? And again, this is relevant because of sample bias. Fathers are going to be the vast majority of appellants because fewer mothers actually need to be appellants because they already won custody, custody in a previous case in a trial court. Okay, so of course the appellant cases, they might skew towards the fathers because the mothers have already won the cases in the trial court, right? Next up, Maryland, where 85% of judges said that fathers get a fair and serious hearing. So these judges said fathers get a fair and serious hearing. It kind of sounds like just their opinion, okay? But it doesn't actually gives us any evidence that they actually do give them a fair and serious hearing, right? Where they said that anti-father bias is more a reflection of social bias discouraging men from seeking custody than any evidence of a judicial bias. And that when men did overcome this and seek custody, they got a fair and serious hearing. Again, this is their opinion. Okay, we will look at this report ourselves and then we'll see. Not only that, but courts were actively biased towards involved fathers and gave them greater deference. Meanwhile, mothers were unfairly punished if they wanted to work or if they had a new partner. And that all these factors gave men a greater advantage and bias in family custody cases. Now, So let's look at the Maryland's uh, report. So le let me read you this here, right? At the same time, the committee's investigation indicates that most cases are resolved at the trial level in conformity with a child-orientated approach, which is gender neutral in practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Custody of the child usually is awarded to the parent who is providing care at the time of custody decision if the child is faring reasonably well in the care of the of that parent did you catch that okay child custody cases or is a uh, custody of the child is usually awarded to the parent who is providing care at the time of the custody decision guess who the vast majority of those parents are going to be mothers okay because the fathers are going to be working more okay which is what the vast majority of the data actually shows, okay, that men work more, especially if they're married, they work more and mothers are more at home with the kids, okay? And if it is common practice to give custody to the parent who is providing care at the time of the custody decision, then this is a massive bias against fathers, a massive bias against fathers, a systematic bias against fathers. This biased bullshit report here actually proves my point, right? With this, I could already end the video, right? This quote alone already destroys him completely, completely, okay? I mean, this is ridiculous, right? Fathers are working, which is what wives want. By the way, he probably wants to say oh, fathers are voluntarily working or something, right? Which is fucking bullshit. Mothers are 38% uh, more likely to file a divorce if she works more than her husband than vice versa. And 29% more likely to divorce if they have had to increase the numbers of hours worked outside the home in the last five years. As The Atlantic reported, two factors are often obscured in a public conversation devoted to women, work and family. First, the vast majority of married mothers don't want to work full time. Second, married mothers who are able to cut back at work to accommodate their family's needs tend to be happier. 80% of women said they would ostracize a man who failed to provide for his family as he should. Okay, quote unquote, as he should. Okay, so uh, women impose this uh, quote unquote breadwinner, aka provider slave role onto men. Okay, 
which means that this places them into the primary caregiver role by default, right? Again, here's more evidence. Winning the lottery sends women rushing off to divorce courts. Men stay, stay married. Okay. The real re reason modern marriage and women more likely divorce stay at home dads who fail to live up to breadwinning winning stereotype. Okay. So women don't want stay at home dads who are with the kids. Thus, dads are not going to be the primary caregivers. Right. Okay, again, more evidence here. House husbands backlash as high flying wife stitch men. They wanted to stay at home. Thousands of men um, are ditched by their wives if they are house husbands. Okay, <clears throat> okay, so this court practice to give to the primary caregiver is bias, is evidence of bias against fathers. Systematic systematic bias against fathers right because what is the father going to do if he's going to be a house husband and he's a primary care taker then he is more likely to be divorced to be ditched by the wives right so he has to work right in order not to be divorced but then he's no longer primary care taker and in cases of custody disputes the court rules or is more likely to rule against them, which this report here clearly states. Okay. So case closed basically on that. Case closed. Your own source debunks you. Okay. Your own source debunks you. Wow. And yeah, the, the rest of this this uh report here is, is just bullshit. It's again a bunch of case studies, a bunch of anecdotes, uh, opinions, okay. Um, and even one hypothetical uh, hypothetical scenario study or something. Uh, right, but it was based on like low sample size respondent data, like 19 judges and eight masters uh, like, like it's 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 just terrible data overall it's it's also very old data right so it's it's just nonsense okay so the florida report bullshit the massachusetts report bullshit the maryland report bullshit and it even proves my point actually right so now the new york report on to new york which found the same biases as Maryland, where involved fathers were given greater deference, meanwhile mothers were punished for wanting to work or having new relationships. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to go too deeply into the New York report, right? Because the other reports were already extreme bullshit. Okay, but I'm just going to quote you from the New York report this. Mothers are presumably preferred as custodial parents, which presumption is reinforced by some counsel's advice to fathers not to litigate custody because they have little chance of winning. Some judges do not realize that some fathers generally are and desire to continue to be actively involved in parenting. So again, this, this report also shows bias against fathers Next, he cites the Civic Research Institute. Which is why the Civic Research Institute, when they surveyed all of the literature on child custody, pointed out that overall, over 40 states and numerous district courts had commissioned studies into gender bias, and that these had found unanimously a pervasive bias against mothers. So let, let, let's actually go through what, what he cites here, right? Um, Right, so he cites this here, Civic Research Institute. And this is not a study here. This is literally like, like a summary of a book, right? The, he, you see summaries of book chapters, right? This is, this is from a book, okay? And it's, he, wrote, uh, he read this, this quote here, right? From chapter 5, which cites this study here or quote-unquote study, because this actually, when you read it, it actually is, uh, it reads like a feminist blog post, 
essentially, right? There's nothing really there in terms of aggregate data, okay? Except it, it cites also the Florida report, which we have already gone over, right? And one of the main evidence that this paper here cites, this toilet paper, is this one here. Uh, sex on the docket reports of state task force on gender bias. This is like where the uh, 40 states uh, gender reports stuff that he just talked about comes from, right? Now, unfortunately, I couldn't find any full uh, report or any link online of the full report of this, right? So I cannot fact check this and cannot read this for myself. I don't think it actually exists uh, online in full, right? except for people who have access to it, right? However, even in a previous preview page, even in a preview page, it says here, anecdotal data, right? This report presents a rich source of empirical and anecdotal data, right? So again, it's going to be full of anecdotes and individual case reports, okay? Not good evidence or basically non-evidence, right? In fact, so pervasive was this bias that when Florida's task force was commissioned to start their study, they skipped the question of if gender bias exists, saying that this has already been well established. Yeah, again, it's the same Florida report that we have gone over, right? Again, it's, it's nonsense. Okay, a bunch of individual case reports, anecdotes, testimonies from in individual cases, no aggregate data, no actual evidence. And when taken overall, these studies show that gender bias does sometimes affect men, but it is overwhelmingly and disproportionately disadvantaging women. Again, this is this statement here, which is again an opinion, is based on uh, this, uh, where, where was it? It's based on this thing here, which nobody who doesn't have access, who can actually read in full, right? And it says here, anecdotal data, right? So, yeah. And it's also very old. Again, like a lot of this data is very old, um, you know, which is like questionable to extrapolate further to today's time, but okay. And we can see this lack of bias against men in more recent studies. Yes, let's go to more recent studies. This is the point where he also absolutely fails, right? Such as this 2007 study into the 21st District Court in South Carolina. And what they found was that fathers who contested for custody got either sole or joint physical custody almost 60% of the time. Across total cases, that was 31% for fathers. So it almost doubled. So let's, let's actually go to the study. I mean, what is this guy talking about? He has not actually understood it or read it in full or, or he's just lying, right? So there is a ta table, right? So you can clearly see if mothers seek sole custody, they get it 81% of the time, okay? Over 80%, 81% of the time, okay? If fathers seek sole custody, they get it 33% of the time, okay? You want to tell me this is not indicative of bias in favor of mothers really <laughs> wow his own data proves my point his own data proves my point it proves the mra's correct okay doesn't prove your point it proves our point <laughs> wow what a clown what an absolute imbecile But even that 31% is in line with the data from other studies, such as this custody exchange survey of hundreds of law professionals across every state in the country, which showed that on average fathers get about 35% of custody time. So let's also get to this source, like this is also laughable. <laughs> I mean, wow. Look at this, he says that this proves his point that there's no bias against fathers. Look at this, in most states, in most states fathers get less than 50% of the custody, right? 
And look at this, like 26% uh, here, 26%, like even sometimes 21% even, right? In a vast majority of you of the states in the United States, they get it less than 50%, right? This is supposed to prove his point, really? Like, dude, are you okay, buddy? Are you okay? This proves our point. This proves that there's bias against fathers, dude. Like, what are you talking about? Now, why is that 35% and not 50? Well, I covered that extensively in that video, but in summary, it's because men don't do 50% of the childcare before the custody hearing. Yeah, again, this is not this big slam dunk about like child child care. I've already covered this, okay? They literally are incentivized not to be the primary caregiver because women impose that condition onto them. You fucking idiot, right? But even this point, right? Let me also show you this, right? So from the Family Law Center by Coleman. Myth, the best interest of a child normally lie with the primary caretaker to whom custody should normally be awarded. Reality, no empirical evidence supports the distinction between primary and secondary care taker after age five as children's greatly increased social cognitive and emotional maturity creates changes in the meaning of attachment and parent-child relationships to the child okay data in this paper suggests that there is no distinction between primary and secondary caretaker even before the age of five okay so this nonsense about oh uh the courts, they are not biased against fathers because they are not as much uh, primary caretakers. Like, this, this, this is a bullshit metric with the primary care takers because, again, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are worse parents, right? Okay? And all of this is before we even talk about the numerous studies that show an even greater bias towards fathers when they are accused of violence or when they accuse the mothers of alienation. And there are scores of those studies. Yeah, that... Okay. This guy is an absolute clown. An absolute clown, okay? Maybe the courts are more willing to listen when the fathers say these things Okay, when they say, oh, look, there's parental alienation and stuff against me as a father. Maybe that's the case be because women are the vast majority of people who do parental alienation. Duh. Like, this is not rocket science, my dude. Okay. Like, look at this. Vast majority of alienating parent female okay okay and false allegations in divorce courts or family courts they are not rare okay here's a great blog post which covers this okay i will not read the whole thing it's packed with data okay as of 50 percent of private law cases involve allegations of abuse but figures more than two indicate that even for the case of separated couples couples, the true underlying rate of abuse does not exceed 20% according to the CSEW. The implication is that 60% of allegations of abuse in the courts are false. Okay. So uh, again, here's a lot of other interesting data which shows that false allegations are not rare in family court. Okay. And again, it comes from females, okay? So of course, there might be uh, judges who are more willing to listen to this because they have made experiences uh, like that, okay? So when a father says, look, uh, my ex-spouse lies about me abusing the children or hitting her or something, right? If a father says that to her ex-spouse, then 
and the, the judge had already 10 cases where this actually was the case where actually there were cases of parental alienation and false allegations done by mothers, then yeah, they might actually be more willing to listen here. Okay? Studies. Now, Lauren's absolutely correct when she implies that using a single data point from a single study to form a narrative would be reckless. But the reason why we say that fathers who actively seek custody are often likely to get it is because there are multiple studies from multiple states across multiple decades that show this to be true. Wrong. Okay. Your own data contradicts you 100%. Okay. Again, the most laughable case probably was the 2007 study, okay, which actually proves our point, right, which proves our point here, okay. So yeah, this guy is an absolute clown and he does not even attempt to understand or attempt to be honest about why there are so few fathers who actually seek uh, custody. Right, and why should they even be forced to seek custody? This should be actually something that they don't have to fight for. It's another thing, right? Why is it automatically given to women, right? Why is it not the default to have equal shared parenting, right? Okay? This alone shows bias against fathers, by the way. So yeah, this was a long video. Uh, this would, will probably be a nightmare to edit. <laughs> but yeah, um, please share it around. It's one of my most important videos and one of my most important takedowns of misinformation done by feminists, okay? All these reports, the Massachusetts report, the Florida report, the Maryland report, all this old ass data, um, which most of it is just uh absolutely garbage data case studies case testimonies individual case reports right and opinions okay it, it's it's just nonsense there's nothing there are no statistics no numbers okay and he also tried to inflate the numbers by mixing joint custody and sole custody and putting them together right it, it's it's just absolute nonsense okay so yeah um thanks for watching and please share this video around and uh yeah and become a patreon member peace out